hypothesis, that, that, that educated guess, that, 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 that scenario that if Christ be not risen, and I want to look at that this evening for a few moments, what if Christ wasn't risen? What if Christ wasn't risen? And so, uh, uh, can you imagine uh, when, when, when we look back at, at, at what's happening there on that resurrection morn? It is still dark outside. And here are these women that are coming to the tomb. And as they come to the tomb, they, they have in their arms spices that are mixed. They have been preparing them. Uh, they, 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 they have more tarpon. They're coming for this, this, this anointing and, 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 and giving. And so, here. Here it is, imagine uh, as, as they came, all the spices in the world cannot take away the aroma of their grief, Brother David. None. But they are grief ridden, they are, they, they are gloomy. Uh, they, they had forgot that he was going to rise again, Brother Craig. I mean, here they come, their heads are hung down, it is not even breaking daylight yet. Uh, they, 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 the, the world is just Fall apart, the bottom has fallen out from underneath them. All of us have probably experienced that a time or two, that something happens in our life and it feels like the bottom has fallen out. Some of us have probably went through grief, but, but here it is. They had banked everything on this man. They had watched him as he raised the dead. They had watched him as he healed bodies. They had, they had listened to him as he taught like no one else has ever taught before. I mean, this was Jesus, the very Son of God. And, and so, uh, it almost sends shivers up and down your spine as you think about this, Brother David. Here they come before the breaking of the day. They're overwhelmed and they come and they see that, that, that the stone is rolled back. Amen. And, and they recognize that He is risen. He is triumphant. Praise God. Praise God. And then Paul gives us this hypothesis. Amen. With some really chaotic conclusions that would result if Christ had not been risen. Think about this. It would affect our government. The Bible says the government will be upon his shoulders. We, we live in the United States of America and the basis of our country has been placed under one nation under God. Can you imagine the lawless of lawlessness of society? We think it's bad, but how bad it would really be if there was no risen Savior. Sister Dietrich, everything has been based upon the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the authority of our law, Brother David, the morality of, of where we are, Sister Dot, all based upon the resurrection of, of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so if he had not been risen, do you know that it would affect our calendar, Brother Doug? I know I said this on a Tuesday night, and we talked even more about it. That 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 uh, uh, BC and, and AD, uh, it would affect that if Christ had not come, and had Christ not would, would not be risen. Do you know that we wouldn't be right that writing uh, two thousand eighteen, but we would be writing a different date. We would be writing twenty seven seventy one. It would be different. Everything would be different. When you look at the calendar and our world, if Christ had not been risen. Do you know that it would affect our citizenship? Do you know that it was because of folks wanting to live godly lives that they believed God and took God at His word and they went searching for a newfound land. And Sister Susan, they came and they found America and it was based upon the principles of God's word. Would we even be here tonight if there would be no resurrected Savior? I mean, it's something to think about tonight. It would affect our worship. We wouldn't be here tonight worshiping a risen Savior. We wouldn't be singing Father God. Amen. We love you. We worship you. We wouldn't be singing praise to the Son of God. We wouldn't be magnifying the Spirit of God. But we might be somewhere uh, wishing and hoping upon a, a, a goddess Mother Earth or something like that. Amen. There would be no, no real worship as we know it tonight. Amen. Maybe we would be worshiping at the spring equinox. I don't know if we'd be completely different if Christ were we're not risen. And so it would really affect our world. You know, there would be a low uh, morality. Amen. Life 
Even in Roman times, life was cheap. It was unvaluable. Uh, faith, uh, it was something that, that, that was not. Uh, life would be nothing but, but a wild Mardi Gras if Christ had not been risen. I want to challenge you tonight to think about it. Let's look at seven ways that we would lose tonight if Christ had not been risen. <coughs> We would have no value of the gospel. Paul writes and he says our preaching would be vain. Amen. It would be useless. Do you know what this is right here tonight? This is the Beth is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you know what the gospel is, Sister Tina? The gospel is good news. If Christ had not been risen, Sister Stacy, there would be no good news tonight. Amen. Uh, there, there would be nothing good about the world that we live in. There would be nothing to good uh, to preach and proclaim. Uh, there would be no Acts chapter number 2 uh, where, the, where, where, where the Holy Ghost begin to move and they stood up and they begin to preach Jesus and Him crucified and the good news spread across the world. Amen. All, all around the globe the good news happened. But if Christ had not been risen, there would be no good news globally. It would be bad news and it would be doomed. But thank God, Christ rose. Not only would there be nothing but bad news, uh, but we would lose our faith. If Christ didn't rise, Paul said our preaching and, 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 and our faith would be in vain. You know, a, 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 a preaching be, begets useful, a, a, a useful faith. And if our preaching would be in vain, then it would beget a, a unuseful faith. There would be no resurrection. There would be no Hebrews chapter number 11, which constitutes a whole chapter full of men and women who are full of faith. And it would be nothing but a fairy tale. But thank God, Christ is risen. Do you remember that book, first book that was chronologically written? Job, he said this, he said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. He went on down to say, I know that my Redeemer lives in one day. Amen. Even in the very beginning, amen. Job said, I have faith and I know because my Redeemer lives. Amen. If Christ had not risen, then all those in Hebrews chapter number 11, uh, Job himself, faith would be in vain. It would be useless. It would be empty. It would be worthless if Christ had not risen. So not only would it change the good news, not only would it change our faith, but we would lose our credibility. You see, it was on the road to a mess that Jesus appeared and their hearts burned within them. There was credibility to the gospel of Jesus Christ. There was credibility to who he was. Amen. It, there, there, there would be roads that we would walk, but there would be roads that would, there would be no help and there would be no comfort. There would be no hope. Uh, all it would be would be deception and sin sinister and, and full of scam artists. Amen. If there was no credibility to Christ being risen. The fourth thing is that we would lose our fruit. Amen. Think about that. That faith produces fruit. What are the fruits of our faith? Amen. There is joy. Amen. There is peace. There is a happy ever after. Amen. His story, if it ended with the tomb alone and Christ had not risen, it would never ever be a happily ever after. If Christ had not risen. We would lose our forgiveness. Hebrews tells us that the blood of Jesus Christ, amen, sacrifice for man's sin, uh, we, we have forgiveness, amen. He, he was the sinless, spotless blood, amen, uh, uh, of the Lamb of God, amen. And, and there would be no fountain drawn from Emmanuel's veins if there was no resurrection. There would be no forgiveness. Every one of us would be here labeled with our sin, struggling with our guilt, never knowing mercy and grace, the redemption of God, if Christ had not risen. 
In general, it means this, that we would lose our hope. Amen. That those who fall asleep in Christ, some of the most difficult moments in most of our lives is when we look and we see our loved ones laid to rest. Amen. Even if it's just a scar or thread of hope that we hold on to, that that person was right with God and made it right with God at the last moment. However it is, amen, all of our hope would be gone. Our loved ones would be gone. There would be no relationship with them. There would be no more touching. There would be no more feeling. There would be no more reunions. That would be the end. You would be destitute. It would be lonely. It would be hopeless and helpless if Christ had not risen. Amen. Uh, we would sorrow as others which had no hope. Amen. If Christ had not been risen, the grave would cause grief to our soul. Amen. Uh, there wouldn't be a brief separation, but there would be a long, uh, uh, unending separation between us and our loved ones if Christ had not risen. We would lose our purpose. See, I like what the songwriter wrote. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. My purpose of facing tomorrow is because he lives. Because, Brother David, I know he's in my tomorrow. I'm living presently. And as I live presently, I know that I can go boldly into the future because Christ lives and there's purpose for me. Amen. Uh, there's abundant life for me. Amen. Uh, the, as, as Paul said, we would be uh, of all men most miserable if Christ did not live. Strictly the value would be gone. Do you remember back in Daniel? where the three Hebrew children were faced with Nebuchadnezzar's fire. They were told that they would be cast into the fire if they did not bow and worship the idol when the music played. And they said, we will not do it. Our God is able to deliver us. But if not, we will not bow. Amen. But the but if not, amen, uh, was removed. Amen. It, it was gone because Christ showed up for them in the middle of, 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 of their fiery furnace trial. And so can we do the same thing? Remove the but if not, uh, not only from Daniel, but from what Paul was saying. Uh, but if Christ be not risen, amen, can we allow our confidence tonight to rise as we say, He is risen. Amen. I uh, don't even doubt a whimper. He is risen. Let your faith proclaim tonight that He is risen. And because He is risen, I can put my confidence and faith in Him just like Job did, just like all the men and women of Hebrews chapter number 11 did. I can have confidence and faith in them that He's working and that He's moving. And, and could you put your confidence in knowing that, that those relationships that's ended in this life with the grave, it is not the end. But one day there is a lively hope that Christ has given to each of us that because He lives, we will live also. Because the stone was rolled and it was evidence that He was resurrected from the grave. We serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living no matter what men say. He's alive today. He's the hope that I hold to. Why well, can I have hope for our country? Because the moral compass still is the Word of God. He said in Matthew 12, verse number 20, For as, as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Amen. And Matthew again, he says, And, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him. And on the third day he will rise again. Jesus answered them and said in John 2, 19, Destroy this temple, and I have in three days I will raise Raise it up again. The tomb is empty tonight. Amen. The tomb Amen. is empty. Amen. The tomb is empty. Amen. Amen. We can shout for the Lord because He's alive. Amen. The yeah. tomb is empty. Jesus rose. Amen. In reality, He was saying this. He was saying, see, I told you so. 
I told you I was going to rise again. And I did. We know that he was sung by groups of people, 14 different groups. And Paul said that over 500 people saw him at one time. So there's no mistaking that he was resurrected from the grave. Amen. He's alive. Yeah. Forevermore. Praise God. Forevermore. That's right. His appearance prompted Mary Magdalene to fall to her feet and cry, Rabboni. Master, teacher, I believe that it should be the same to us. It should prompt us to fall at his feet, Jesus. It's you. You're risen. You're risen. Amen. Those who saw him acted on their belief. You find that Simon Peter, his life was changed because. He reacted on the belief that Jesus was alive. He was resurrected. Uh, you find that, that, that he was different. The church is born because of his resurrection. Amen. On the road to Damascus, he changed the life of Saul who persecuted the Christians and fought against him. And, and on the road to Damascus, uh, uh, there was uh, there was Paul. He said, who are you? I am Christ. Amen. I'm risen. Death couldn't hold me. The grave could not keep me. I am risen. Amen. Paul gives this hypothesis. If Christ had not been risen, then our preaching and our faith would be in vain. But tonight, my preaching to you is not in vain because Jesus Christ is risen. Your faith is not in vain tonight. You know why? Amen. Because Jesus Christ is risen. Amen. Every prayer that you pray, amen, though it may be time and time again, amen, it, your, your prayer is not in vain, amen, because Jesus is risen. Your confidence in the, in the work of the cross, your confidence in a risen Savior, it's not in vain tonight because Jesus is risen. You're hoping against all hope, amen, it's not in vain tonight because you're hoping a resurrected, risen Savior, amen, it's not foolish tonight putting your faith and your confidence in Him because He's alive. Amen. 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 Think about this tonight. I've never been to the temple, but I've seen pictures and I've heard of folks that's been there. And you know, all the archaeologists and, 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 and all those forensic scientists and all they're doing and dealing and all the things that they can solve with DNA. But, 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 but it's evidence. He's resurrected. He's alive. Amen. We serve a risen Savior. You, He's alive. Yes. And have you ever thought this? Why did the stone need to be rolled away? I believe this with all my heart. It's not that Jesus needed the stone to be rolled away to be resurrected. The stone didn't hold him in the grave. Amen. He was God. He didn't need the stone to be rolled away. Amen. But it was an entrance for us. Amen. To look in and see that as we enter into that place of the resurrection, there is eternal life for you and I. Amen. And we look at that place where He was buried. And when we say by faith, Amen, I died with Him, but I'm resurrected with Him. Amen. It reminds us that we serve a risen Savior. just want to say tonight, our faith is not in vain. Do you hear me? Amen. Our faith is not in vain. Do you know why? Amen. Because we serve a resurrection. Hallelujah. Amen. There is purpose for every one of us tonight. Amen. Every time you date your check, you give evidence to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is alive. Amen. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Thank you, Jesus. He's alive. Thank you, Jesus. He is alive. Amen. And Sister Beth will come to the piano tonight. What are those things that you've prayed for? That you've hoped for? I want to be reminded tonight. Your faith is not in vain. He's alive. Amen. You're He's Thank alive. Jesus. Healing. Thank you, Jesus. Keep praying. He's alive. Amen. Salvation for loved ones. He's alive. Amen. Amen. Don't be overtaken by grief. 
He's alive. We do not grieve as others which have no hope. Amen. But we have hope tonight. We have hope. Tonight I wonder if we can gather in around about these altars. We could just say, you know, I'm going to keep preaching the Word of God by the life I live. The testimony that I share. The words I say. Because God is alive. I'm going to keep holding on to faith, trusting and knowing and believing because He's alive tonight. And I'm going to gather in. But if Christ had not risen, the good news is the evidence, the evidence tonight shows very loud and clear He is alive. Amen.